Here on the reserve at Fields of Those Spring has been trying to arrive for several weeks now. Back in January we saw the first of our avocets and oyster catchers start to arrive on the South Lake and in the hedgerows around the reserve birdsong is starting to fill out with song thrush, greenfinch and blackbird all present at the moment. Over the last few weeks we've also started to say goodbye to our Buick swans. They're leaving the rushy, heading back on that epic migration two and a half thousand miles back up to the Russian tundra. But back here on the reserve, March is a fantastic time to catch up with one of our breeding species, and that's our cranes. Here on the reserve, we've got around about six pairs at present, and they'll soon be dancing around, they'll be jumping, lots and lots of calling as they get ready for the breeding season ahead. And they'll be making use of the wetland habitat that we've got around the reserve, such as the islands out here in front of the Marty Smith hide, a perfect place for a pair to nest down. And you'll have seen in previous episodes of Wild Watch over the last few months, we've been creating new nesting habitat right across the reserve to accommodate all of those pairs. Thanks to the unique colour combinations of rings on their legs, we're able to see exactly who is paired with who and what interactions they're having out here on the reserve. And contrary to popular belief, we found over the last few seasons these birds definitely don't pair for life. We're seeing lots of changes amongst those pairs. We still have some of our old faithfuls that have stayed together for several seasons, birds like Wendy and Albert, Phelps and Elizabeth Royal. But here close to the reserve, so out on the South Lake, here at the Martin Smith and out at the Zeiss Hyde, we've seen lots of changes in those pairs over the years. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens this season, whether the pairs from last year stay together, whether new birds arrive as part of the spring migration and start to pair up with birds that are on site. And you'll be able to keep up to date with everything that's going on through our social media channels and the sightings blog on our website. And it won't be too long before the hedgerows and reed beds around us are filled with our summer migrants too, things like sedge warblers, reed warblers and black caps. They'll be all arriving over the next couple of weeks. So there's lots to see here over the spring at Slimbridge. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm the amphibian supervisor here at Toad Hall. And today we're behind the scenes and I'm going to show you uh, some of the golden mantellas that we have here. The golden mantella are native to Madagascar, found in the eastern province in a tiny distribution. They grow to 19 to 24 millimetres in size, so very small. And they come in varying different colours from red to orange all the way down to yellow. These bright colours are obviously not good for camouflage, which a lot of other amphibian species use. These guys use their bright colours as a warning system, telling other animals that they are toxic and dangerous, giving them the confidence to sit out in the open. Luckily for our amphibian keepers here at Slimbridge, our mantella are not toxic in captivity. This is because they eat a specific insect in the wild that carries the toxin. Instead, here at Slimbridge, we feed our golden mantella a varying diet of different insects that help keep their health levels up and give them all the nutrients that they need. The golden mantella that are found in Madagascar come from lentic wetlands. These wetlands provide a habitat of screw pine forests, which allow them to hide within the roots that are very complicated, as well as hiding within the leaf litter, allowing them to find prey. The golden mantella is classed as critically endangered in the wild, and sadly, the population is still in decline. The current population left is still under threat from things like logging, farming, and pollution of the waterways. These threats mean that the already small population becomes fragmented and they're no longer allowed to find each other during the breeding seasons. Here at Toad Hall, we plan to try and breed these animals and distribute them throughout other zoos in the UK. Come and see the golden mantellas in our new exhibit at Toad Hall.